Hey guys, I said I wanted to do a series of videos disproving this you can lose salvation nonsense. Salvation is a free gift received by faith. The only way you could lose it is if you went back in time and took Jesus off the cross. Because you're putting all of your trust, your rest, the basis for your salvation on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ according to the scriptures. It's what he did, not what we do. What you do can determine reward, loss of reward, chastisement, even early death. Blessing, long life, short life, a good witness, a bad witness, fellowship with others, fellowship with God. But it has nothing on earth to do with you getting or staying saved. And that's the problem. People think their righteousness has something to do with salvation. And it doesn't. It's God's righteousness imputed on you by faith. The gospel that saved us is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. They're always looking for bad news. And I didn't find this list. A lot of them have been taken down because they've been refuted. There was one called 70 verses that prove you can lose salvation. If you can find that, oh, please, please send it to me. And I will go through each single one. As of now, I just go through a bunch of random websites of people that have no idea what the scriptures actually say and most of them aren't even king james they're a bunch of convoluted mess and they usually go to first john second peter hebrews uh, stuff that they don't understand or, or they'll take verses about jesus preaching to the kingdom preaching the kingdom to the jews he said i came but for the lost sheep of israel where he's trying to show them how they can't be saved because of their lineage to Abraham. They can't be saved by keeping the law. That there's none righteous. You know, I didn't come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. They don't get that. The point is there are none righteous. No, not one. He's saying you got to admit you're a sinner to, to turn to me in repentance. To turn towards me in faith as Savior. Because I can only save sinners, not righteous people. They don't need me. All right, so I'm just going to go over. This will be like the first one just to give you an idea where they come up with this garbage. Now, Hebrews is, the writer is telling the Hebrews that there's the once for all sacrifice of Jesus was completely sufficient. Their religious works, all of their little rituals they do, and their animal sacrifices that they do year after year are no longer necessary or accepted. They won't be accepted. There is no more sacrifice for sins. And that you must rest in what Christ did. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not again entangled in the yoke of bondage. He's trying to tell them that all of their dead works of the law can't save them. That's why he says... Let us not lay again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. Because he's saying, I shouldn't have to keep telling you this. That Christ died for our sins according to scriptures. He fulfilled all those scriptures, the feast, the, the law, everything, through one man's obedience unto the cross. We're saved. Just like one man's disobedience, Adam, all die. Through one man, Christ, God in the flesh, all live. It, it, it's that simple. But the simplicity in Christ is lost. And I want to show you an example here of how completely wrong uh, it says those that are unlearned, unstable, rest scriptures to their own destruction. I, I, I get this thing at least once a week, and I am constantly showing what it means. I also get one board of God cannot commit sin. Yeah, yeah, the seed of Christ in him cannot sin. It's not possible. The new man in him cannot sin. Okay, the flesh still does. He, see, we'll get a new glorified body. We are a new creation. The body, the new body hasn't manifested yet, but the new spirit has. Because the moment we receive him by trusting in what he did for us as Savior, we are born of God into his family and, and people can't get that the old man and the new man the old man the flesh is going to war against the new man the spirit okay and that's why he's always telling saved people brethren to fight against that to remind them that you died with christ you didn't just die with him he died as you 
He was you on that cross. So you technically died. Although this flesh is walking around alive, it's really dead. The, the spirit in you is alive, and we should be feeding and listening to the spirit and not the dead flesh. So here's just an example of one rested scripture. It's so frustrating. And, of course, it's in Hebrews. Again, it's written to Hebrews. That's the context. Now, all scripture is profitable for correction, for reproof, for instruction and in righteousness. But you got to know to whom it's speaking and about what. Okay? So they give us the Hebrews 10, 26 here. Uh, it gives you one that is not the King James, which is another reason it's confusing. But listen to what this guy says. He says, that sin we are born under, that debt is paid in full, but you do not have a license to continue in sin. Okay, if you have to stop sinning once you're saved, nobody's saved. You're not saved. The guy telling you this isn't saved. I'm nobody saved. Because we sin every day. That which is not of faith is sin. If you know to do something good and don't do it, it is sin to you. If you sin against your own conscience, and it's not even really a sin. Like, like if you decide you're going to be a vegetarian, you go, mm, maybe I'll eat meat. But you do it against your own conscience, you sinned. It didn't sin to God, but it sinned to you because you did it against your own conscience. All right? The, the thoughts of foolishness are sin. The whole point is that you miss the mark of God's perfection. And you can only have God's perfection when he imputes his righteousness on you. You see, he wore our sin who had no sin. We wear his righteousness, although our righteousness is his filthy rags. It's that simple. It's, it, it's like that. The father and the son made a covenant and said, I'm going to save man. And Jesus said, I'm going to take the payment in my own body. And I'm going to offer my blood to you, father, so that they can belong to us. They are mine. I bought them with a price. The problem is people just don't believe it. Okay? So here they are twisting this scripture. It says, that debt's paid, but you do not have a license to continue to sin. If you continue in sin and your heart becomes unrepentant. Here, an another thing. They don't know what repent means. I've done tons of verses on repent, meaning change your mind. Uh, you can repent from a sin. Uh, in the Old Testament, they were told to turn from their idolatry or they, the nation was going to be uh, destroyed or come under some kind of judgment. But the law was never for eternal life. The law was for blessing and cursing and prosperity uh, and preservation and protection of the nation of Israel. And they take those verses out of Ezekiel and Jeremiah and, and, and make that about eternal life. It's not even about eternal life. It's about the preservation, blessing, or cursing of the nation of Israel. Stop twisting scriptures. All right? And it says, unrepentant, you are running up the debt. Because Hebrews 10 says, dear friends, if we deliberately continue sinning after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there is no longer any sacrifice that will cover these sins. That's infuriating. That's not what it says at all. What he's saying here is, if you get saved and you sin, you just used up the blood of Jesus. Like, sin is more powerful than the precious blood of the Almighty God. Are you kidding me? The bulls and goats covered it for at least a year. He's saying that the blood of uh, God's only son can't isn't stronger than sin. Sin's way more powerful. So he's saying Satan is way more powerful than God. And uh, what Jesus did really didn't accomplish anything. It's all about you and you not sinning your performance. When it clearly says it's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. So let's, let's look at what this uh, verse actually is talking about. What he's actually saying is that uh, if you sin, if you sin willfully by rejecting the sufficiency of of the once for all sacrifice of Jesus, despite the spirit of grace, calling the son of God, uh, calling the blood an unclean thing as if it's not sufficient, like this guy's doing, trampling the son of God underfoot, despite the spirit of grace, again, I might say, and you continue to do animal sacrifices and religious rituals and dead works of the law, there remains no more sacrifice for sin because God's not going to accept those animal sacrifices because there was only one sacrifice once for all 
and it covered sin forever, and they should not have any consciousness of sin at all, because it was wiped out. Jesus by himself purged our sins and sat down at the right hand of majesty. We are perfected forever, justified of all things. These are false prophets straight out of hell. They twist scripture. This man's telling you if you sin after you uh, receive the knowledge of truth, no more, you, no more sacrifice for your sins there. That blood doesn't work anymore to, to, to take care of your sins. It's a lie. Now let's look at what really is being said over here in Hebrews 10. Okay, Hebrews 10, 26 says, For if we sin willfully after that we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Okay, so he's not going to accept the animal sacrifices. But let's start at the beginning of that chapter here. Chapter 10, okay? For by the law, here's the context, for by the law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the thing. See, animal sacrifice was a shadow. Just like the blood of the lamb on the doorpost for Passover. That was a shadow. It wasn't because the people inside were keeping the law. No, it was because the blood of the lamb was on the doorpost. And death passed them. And when we're under the blood of the lamb of God, we're covered by his blood. Death passes over us. The second death. You see, it was a shadow, all right? The law having a shadow of good things to come, that lamb's blood on the wall was not the lamb, but it was a shadow of the lamb to come. Behold, the lamb which takes away the sins of the world. It took away the sin. People, They don't believe the gospel. And not the very image of the things can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereon too perfect. It's telling you right there, could never make them perfect, but this one sacrifice by Jesus does. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? Because that the worshipers once purged should have had no more conscience of sin. Do you see that? If those animal sacrifices took care of sin once for all, they would have no more conscience of sins. But they do. But in those sacrifices, there is a remembrance again made of sin every year. Wherefore, see, it just covered the sin, but Jesus purged our sins. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. But Jesus' blood did. Took it away, okay? He doesn't have to keep dying over and over again. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared me. And burnt offering and sacrifice for sin thou hast had no pleasure. Then said I, lo, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering, and burnt offerings, and offering for sin, thou wouldest not, neither had pleasure therein, which are offered by the law. Again, they were shadows of the sacrifice. He says, Then, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, the first covenant. Okay? that he may establish the second, the new covenant, okay? By the which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. This progressive sanctification is garbage. Uh, you can pro be progressively sanctified in the eyes of other people, in your walk and in fellowship, but you are sanctified by his blood. You are made holy, de declared holy by the blood of Christ, set apart by God for God because of his blood, by which we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. See why there's no more sacrifice for sin? Because he died once for all, okay? Not because you can use it up. I'm just sick of it. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. Do you see the context here or where they're going? All right. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. That's Jesus Christ. He, he confirms it again. This man offered one sacrifice for sins forever. Done. It took care of every sin, past, present, and Future, all my sins were future when he died. And uh, it says, even our past sins. Yeah, all the ones even before the cross. All right. <sighs> From henceforth, expect until his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering, he has perfected forever. 
them that are sanctified. And it just says, you're sanctified by his blood. He perfected us forever. So how can you use up the blood of Jesus because you sin too much? You're relying on your own righteousness. That is stupid. It's horrible. And it's wrong. It's so clear what the context here is. Ugh. For by one offering he's perfected forever them that are sanctified, and were sanctified by his blood, whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. There's no need for sacrifices because he won't accept those sacrifices because Jesus made the sacrifice once for all. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. Remember, when he was crucified, the veil ripped from top to bottom. It was supernaturally ripped. That represented his flesh. We can come boldly through the throne of grace. And I said I'll do videos on the Ark of the Covenant. I'll do videos on the tabernacle in the wilderness, how it all represented. I've done videos on the red heifer and what they represented. I've, I've found all kinds of things in the Old Testament. Uh, let's see, e e even uh, Abraham, when, when the ram was caught by its horns in the thicket of thorns. That's the crown of thorns our Lord wore. Well, you, you know, you got to see these things in scripture. Uh, it is the, it is the, what is it? It is the glory of God to hide mysteries and the glory of kings to seek and seek them out. All right. And it says, Lynn, um, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. See it 10 that after this, it says that it's all done. It's a new and living way through his flesh. Let us draw near with a true heart in faith. Full assurance of faith. Worrying that maybe you can out sin his blood? No. Full assurance of faith. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. And our bodies washed with pure water. The word of God. The Holy Spirit. The blood of Christ. Okay? Now, there's nothing left to be done. Full assurance of faith. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised the promise is all who see the son believe on him shall never die if you put your trust reliance on faith in the death burial and resurrection of god's only son you have eternal life eternal everlasting not temporary not probationary based on your performance i don't care that you can't get it I don't care that it's a straw man, but 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 then you can do whatever you want. Don't worry about what other people do. God chastises his children. He takes care of his kids. A person's got to be born again first. And then he will begin to work in them about getting rid of the sin in their life so that they can be a good kid and serve him. And if they don't, they're going to not live in the fullness of the joy and the blessing that God had for the will in their life. Let him worry about his own kids. It's not up to you to determine, well, no, no, they're not really saved if they don't do It's none of your business. The eternal life is a free gift. Stop trying to worry about they might get away with a sin. <laughs> Stop. You're not sinless, and you've never stopped sinning. Get over yourself. Stop. When Look to Christ crucified. Look to the risen, glorified Christ. That's your salvation. When you look to you, you are surely going to fail. You are going to be either really insecure and confused and, and might have one good day. Maybe I am saved. Look how great I am. I gave money that a homeless guy. I was really selfless. Or you're going to go, oh, maybe I'm not saved. I didn't do that. Because you're looking at yourself and your own works instead of God's promises. And that is that God's report of his son, that he gives us eternal life. And that life is in his son. Keep your eyes on Christ and not on you. And you have peace. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to do good works. It, we should be standing full assurance of our faith, knowing we're saved, and provoke each other to good works. We're saved. We're secure. We can live for God now in peace, knowing that's done. That foundation is laid. Okay? Now it says... 
For if we sin willfully after that we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Do you see that, what the willful sin is here? This whole thing is telling you, stop thinking your animal sacrifices are going to help you. Stop thinking works of the law are going to help you. None of this is good. All your dead works. It says, let, let us not lay again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. So the willful sin here is to deny the once for all sacrifice of God's only son, thinking that's not enough and that he needs your help some way with your stupid religious works. Okay, you can't do it. That's the willful sin here. If we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. So you're going to willfully sin by offering him some dirty bull or goat after he told you the, that it, it's only what his son did for you? Only his once for all perfect sacrifice that the bulls and the goats were just the shadow of the good thing that was to come? And you're trying to offer the dirty shadow instead of the, the perfect spotless, blemishless lamb of God, that's the willful sin. He's not going to accept that sacrifice for your sin. There is no more sacrifice for sins because he died once for all. But it says, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. You just denied, despite the spirit of grace, the once for all sacrifice of Jesus. You don't think you're going to face some fearful looking judgment? All right. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. How much sore punishment suppose ye that ye thought worthy who had trodden under the foot the Son of God and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and has done despite unto the Spirit of grace? Do you see that? That's not about you sinning. Oh, you sinned, you despite, you, what? Where do you even get that? He's saying it, if that covenant, which was just a shadow of the good one, people died, it didn't say they were sent to hell, it said they perished, they died physically. Uh, how much more are you going to get here? Now, it doesn't mean that some of these men were saved. And we're just continuing to offer these useless sacrifices. And it, 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 despite the spirit of grace, it's insulting to God. They could just drop dead from it. Like Ananias and Sapphira, it doesn't mean they're not saved. But there were some here that weren't saved, that didn't believe it. They were, eh, eh, you know, and you have to know which. But it says, this is what they're doing when they're trying to offer animal sacrifice when they're trying to do dead works of the law and go back to all that ritual, instead of resting in what Jesus already did with full assurance of faith, getting rid of that evil conscience, having faith without wavering, knowing we're sanctified by the blood. Now, how much sore punishment suppose ye that be thought worthy who's trodden underfoot the Son of God? You, you trampled him underfoot as if he wasn't clean. And, and it's counted the blood of the covenant, his precious blood of the new covenant, wherewith he was sanctified, made holy. I was made holy by it, and I'm going to trample it underfoot and, you call, and call it an unclean thing. And it's done despite unto the spirit of grace. God freely gave you that? Come on, that is what it's about. That is what that verse is about. It is not losing salvation. But that is one verse that they try to use completely out of context. I've explained it many times. We went back over to, there's one, okay? We're going to go back over more of uh, Hebrews 10 and Hebrews 6. I'm going to go over the whole book of Hebrews. But remember, the whole thing is that Christ died once for all. And all the animal sacrifices and dead works of the law were a shadow of what the real Lamb of God would bring us. The purging of sins, all right? Not the covering of them where you have to sacrifice every year, but the purging of them once for all. And if you deny that that's enough, you are trampling the Son of God underfoot, calling his blood an unclean thing, and you will be under fiery indignation for that, all right?
Now, you can be an, under judgment and wrath uh, uh, for something like this and die early. It doesn't mean eternal damnation. But if you reject the once for all sacrifice of Jesus and say, nope, that didn't save me, and you go on and try to get in another way, you are a thief and a robber and you are not saved. Okay, it tells us that. All right, there's one answer. If you got a list of, of uh, 70 verses that prove you can lose salvation, you can find one of those old things, send them to me. I'll go verse by verse. But what I'm doing now is taking the top ones people send me or post, and then they try to go on and explain why it means you can lose salvation. It's just retarded. I'm sorry, it's just retarded. But there, there's no way after I've explained this from the beginning all the way to the, you know, they even have to say, uh, lest you believe in vain, as many times as I've explained what believing in vain is, denying the bodily resurrection, they still think that's part of losing salvation too. It's just a bunch of nonsense. Uh, they love to use, lest I be a castaway, or, uh, uh, one born of God does not commit sin. He who sins is of the devil. He who is righteous it does righteous is righteous. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. They they love that the unrighteous won't inherit because they just twist them. They just twist them, and I'll uh you know go over every one of them. And sometimes just type in my name and either the number of that verse or part the famous part like the unrighteous won't inherit, and then my name. And I guarantee I've done a video on it. But I've got several hundred on there. But for now, I'm just, this is the beginning of the uh, putting away the nonsense that you can lose salvation. We stand fast in our liberty. We know we're saved. I know I am. And the more you stand fast and secure in what Christ did and keep your eyes on what he did and not what you do, you don't have fear. If it's not about yourselves, if it's not of yourselves... It's the gift of God and salvation is of the Lord. Then you're always looking to what Christ did and you're secure. He who believes in me shall never die. Believe thou this? Yeah, I do. That's how you have peace. All right. All right. I'll do some more for you. God bless.